The special relation people had to the 432 Hz music has been a mystery for ages. But at one point, someone tried to replace that relation with something else. Who tried changing the 432 Hz music we knew to 440 Hz music? Why did they try this? Why did they try to cover it all up? Stay with me, because I'll show you the power of 432 Hz frequency. Music is all around us. People nowadays can't imagine their lives without music. From classical to pop, and from folk to subcultures such as punk or black metal, there are a huge number of options on the market when it comes to music. And because people consume so much music every day, and in almost every aspect of their lives, they usually tend to pick the music that best represents their moods and feelings. Also, music can change these moods and feelings. People are often very susceptible to certain music, and will almost unconsciously play what they feel will boost their spirits when they're feeling sad, pump them up before a workout, or help them cry when they feel the need to, but can't really do it on their own. Music can also have a healing effect, and I'm not just talking about the making somebody feel better after a breakup kind of healing. I'm talking about actual healing. Some music can actually have positive effects on the body, such as lowering blood pressure, altering neural waves, and even stimulating certain parts of the body in order for them to work better. That music is usually the one we find encoded at 432 Hertz. But what's so special about 432 Hertz music? If it's so beneficial to humans, why isn't it more popular among artists and producers of today? Is there some sort of plan to remove 432 Hertz music and replace it with only 440 Hertz? Who stands to gain from something like this? How and when was this discovered? And how does it link to many other things that surround us? Music was invented about 35,000 years ago. There's nothing certain about who invented music and what music actually was back then. Rhythmic sounds and cadences may be the first sounds ever made by humans that may pass for the definition of music. Whistling is also a strong contender for the first sounds made by somebody that could resemble something musical. The truth is that nobody knows. As time went on, what then was considered music was probably used for communicating over long distances or to warn people of different dangers. People eventually started developing a more and more complex understanding of music, and they started creating what can only be described as songs. These were created by combining different sounds together and aligning them in a certain order as to obtain somewhat of a musical picture. These first songs were most probably used to entertain and also to help people worship various deities during rituals. The oldest song ever discovered is called the Hurrian Hymn No. 6 and dates back to around the 14th century BCE. Although it isn't known how that song was sung, there have been a lot of speculations and there are even a few recordings of it being sung made by researchers and university professors. Speaking of developing music, instruments were also a big part of the process. First off, percussion instruments were invented. These were among the simplest. After them, the wind ones were the next logical step. Blowing on the edge of a leaf is still used in some rural communities around the world in order to create music or a phonic background for something. After those, strings came along. This is where things really took off for both instrument and music creators. That's mainly because string instruments offer a much wider range of sound. But in order to create different sounds, tuning is needed. And tuning is nothing else than changing the frequency at which a string vibrates in order to create a different wavelength. And so, a different sound. Moving even closer to the history we learned in school and starting to see familiar historical names and figures, there's Pythagoras. Besides being a brilliant mathematician, he was also very intrigued by the natural world and understanding it through math. And one of the things he theorized was that music could actually be expressed mathematically. So he invented a turning key that used the 432 Hertz setting. Granted, he didn't know what a Hertz was and didn't even have a functioning notion of seconds. Well, the definition of a second has changed greatly throughout history, but it's argued that the main idea started with the Greeks, such as Eratosthenes, Claudius, Ptolemy, and Hipparchus, who were using a sexagesimal system, or a base 60 system, to basically divide the globe 
and they did believe in a round Earth at that point, to divide the circle of the globe into 360 degrees and then take different parts of the day and the Earth's rotation and break it down also into 60 divisions of 60, basically, which gives us basically our hours and our seconds of the modern day, more or less. But he used the ratio of C and A, where he defined any pitch as being C equals 1 and A equals 432. This means that... Even without sophisticated measuring instruments, he managed to create a tuning system that was based on the 432 frequency. Another famous figure that used the 432 frequency was Giuseppe Fortunino Francesco Verdi, known for his operas Traviata, Rigoletto, and Aida. I'll just go through a, a little bit of a timeline here. First, let's start with you know the, the classical composers, Bach, Mozart, Haydn, Handel, well, at their time, there really wasn't a standardized pitch. You could travel from city to city, church to church, which usually would have an organ in them, and the tuning varied widely. But generally what's known is that the tuning that was used by these composers generally was much, much lower than what I played for you today as the modern pitch. So for example, um, both Handel and Mozart used a pitch which is actually even a little bit lower than the A432 that I played for you. Verdi asked for exactly this pitch of A432 as the natural scientific pitch. Verdi used the 432 tuning for practical reasons, rather than any other ones. That's because, as a composer, he saw that the pitch of A fluctuated greatly between 400 and 460 hertz. By this time, hertz had proven that sound travels in waveform and was capable of measuring the frequency of these waves. So Verdi had some help in understanding how his music could be controlled and adjusted to his specific preferences. He did this with a number of his works in order to give them all the same feeling when being played in his home country of Italy, as well as abroad. That's because many countries didn't use a standardized system for tuning their instruments at Verdi's time. France, for instance, used the 435 hertz frequency for their piano middle A. Over time, all of the music created had to align with the new 440 hertz standard frequency in tuning. That's because, starting in 1885, a revolution supported by some very serious lobbying was done in order for the 440 frequency to replace the 432. It all started with the Italian government. The music commission of this governing body in Italy decided to impose the rule that all orchestras and instruments in general to be tuned using a tuning fork that vibrated at the 440 Hz frequency. It isn't really known why this decision was taken. Some say in order to differentiate from the French, which was using the 432 Hz frequency. This way, Italian composers would gain a different sound than their French counterparts. Although unclear who was behind this decision, the USA followed soon after, through the Federation of American Musicians. They decided in 1917 to abandon any other tuning standard and adopt the 440 Hz one. This was a real blow for the 432 Hz supporters. More so, things got even worse when signatories from all over the world adopted the 440 Hz standard in 1939. It wasn't until 1939 that an international conference held in London recommended to use A440 as a compromise between the various tuning systems used at the time, some of which reached beyond 450 hertz. In fact, the BBC required their orchestras to tune to A440 instead of A439 because 439 is a prime number, and that frequency was difficult to generate electronically with standard electronic clocks. And then again in 1953, that meant that all instruments had to be tuned using a mathematical ratio from the piano A, which was at 440 hertz. This ensured a standardization in what instruments, and consequentially music, sounded like, from Toronto to Tokyo. But not every musician is happy with this standard. That's because many believe that 440 is an unnatural frequency, arrived at randomly and without any scientific support. The 432 Hz frequency is more easily relatable. That's because it's derived from the 8 Hz frequency discovered by Otto Schumann and has been called the Schumann frequency, or Earth's frequency. It got that name because Schumann demonstrated that waves traveling from Earth to the ionosphere surrounding it 
do so at an 8 hertz frequency. So any multiple of that frequency, which 432 is for example, would be perfect for tuning any sound emitting instrument. Even so, the 432 hertz frequency was out, and the 440 hertz frequency was in. Some say that there was even some great interest from people such as Rockefeller in this replacement. Some sources suggest that his interest was linked to the way that people responded to music tuned to the 440 hertz frequency. He suggested that it made people more susceptible to outside stimuli by weakening the body and easier to control. A similar theory exists regarding the Nazis, who may have wanted to control their population by song music made at that frequency. Sure, some people may dismiss these theories as simple conspiracies meant to demonize certain people. But the fact that the 440 frequency has been the standard for tuning instruments and so has influenced the entire music industry for generations still remains. As stated earlier, the 432 hertz frequency has been around for a very long time and has been used by many prominent figures in history, from mathematicians to musicians from all ages and parts of the world. All have had some sort of connection to this frequency. But what links can be found beyond mathematics and music? Turns out that the number 432 is quite often found in the things that are around us and has been used for a very long time in various ways, from ties with architecture, medicine, and even with astronomy. Some people may say that when you set out looking for evidence of something you believe of being true, you will always find what you're looking for even if you have to bend the truth sometimes, or ignore other relevant evidence to the contrary. But this isn't the case. That's because there are a lot of scientists out there that have, over the years, proven that the number 432 is actually pretty important. That's because it has links to a lot of other important phenomena from around the world. It even appeared in sacred writings. For example, the Great Flood mentioned in the Bible has correspondence in other cultures as well. But the time period when it took place isn't the same. In some written accounts from Babylon, the flood took place some 432,000 years ago, from the point that they consider to be creation. For example, the Great Pyramid of Giza is a very interesting example of how the number 432 is linked to architecture. That's because the relation between the size of the Great Pyramid and that of the Earth is exactly a ratio of 1 to 43,200. We can go even deeper and explain that by multiplying that ratio with the height of the Great Pyramid and divide that number by the number of feet there are in a mile, which is 5,280, we will get 3,938.685. That number, although still 11 miles off, is pretty close for ancient Egyptians to the radius of the Earth as measured between its poles. Also, by using the perimeter of the base of the pyramid and multiplying it with 43,200, and then dividing that result by 5,280, you will get the number 24,734.94 miles. That's just 170 miles short of the circumference of Earth. We can also see the number 432 in various forms popping up at Stonehenge. One such example is the fact that the structure consists of 60 stones arranged in a circle. If we are to divide 25,920, which is how long a platonic year lasts, by 60, we will get 432. There are many more examples of how the number 432 appears in both earthly and unearthly places, from the length of Saturn's orbit to some frequencies detected coming from far out of space. Over time, people have tried a lot of things in order to heal themselves and others, from various plant-based remedies all the way to today's modern medical solutions. History is full of examples of healers and doctors coming up with various treatments to illnesses. Frequencies, in general, have had a major role in the life and loving of people over time. It's been proven that the soft purring of cats can improve the mood in people and even assist with healing. Music therapy is a very well-established method of healing different problems the human body may have. Usually, this is used on the nervous system. Music has been seen as the optimal solution for stress relief, calming an agitated mind, or even improving sleep patterns and neural pathways. But why is it so efficient? Everything around us, including our own bodies, is matter that vibrates at a certain frequency. 
So interfering with that frequency and making it higher or lower can improve your general well-being. That's how music therapy works. The sounds and tracks used in this type of therapy are used to create a general sense of happiness and well-being within the mind of the patient. This helps them relax and lower stress levels. It's been demonstrated that listening to certain music every day can improve things like decision making. It can stimulate the production of serotonin and dopamine, and it can stimulate your bodily functions, regulating them in case they're blocked. In a word, music has a benefic effect over your whole energy. But what kind of music should you listen to in order to get this effect? This is where the 432 Hertz music comes in again. Being a frequency that is much more related to the natural frequency of Earth itself, it's easier to listen to. Musicians and scientists have said for a long time that music at a 432 Hz frequency doesn't need to be turned up that much, having a more natural feel to it than music at 440 Hz. Because of this, it can be listened to by almost anyone, regardless of age. So it can be used for children or younger people to help regulate their sleep or lower their stress levels. It can also be used in older people that have a high blood pressure. Studies have shown that listening to this kind of music will help reduce blood pressure, improve circulation in your body, and reduce the risk of a stress-based heart attack. A documentary available on YouTube states that, numerous studies on whether 432 Hz is better than 440 Hz have been conducted. Four studies in particular were conducted by Italian researchers. A study by the University of Florence in Italy on the influences of 432 Hz music on the perception of anxiety during endodontic treatment, a randomized controlled clinical trial, 2016, concluded material reduction in anxiety in the group that listened to 432 Hz music compared to the group that did not. Another study performed at the University of Florence in Italy on music tuned to 440 Hz versus 432 Hz and the health effects, a double-blind crossover in 2019, involved 33 volunteers in a healthy condition. The results showed a material decrease in their heart rates from this blind study and an overall preference by the participants to music in 432 Hz versus 440 Hz. Further studies performed at the University of Florence on music tuned to 432 Hz versus music tuned to 440 Hz for improving sleep in patients with spinal cord injuries, a double-blind crossover pilot study in 2020 involving 12 participants with spinal injuries provided with MP3 players loaded with their favorite music tuned to 440 Hz or 432 Hz. They were invited to listen to music for 30 minutes each day. After listening to music at 432 Hz, there was a significant improvement in sleep scores. Just another testament to the healing powers of the 432 Hz frequency. A lot of healers from all over the world have used 432 Hz encoded music coupled with other therapies, such as massages, or even more conventional means of treating patients. Some have also managed to see results when checking for how this type of music can affect the chakras and the flow of chi in the body. For instance, 440 Hz music, being a more aggressive kind, usually means that people need to focus more on listening to it and understanding it. That means that it stimulates the third eye chakra that is related to the rational side of the mind. 432 Hz music, on the other hand, being a softer kind of music, means that it is associated with the heart chakra making it perfect for those who want to explore their sensitive side and meditate. Nobody is saying that listening to 432 Hz music can miraculously cure diabetes in people or restore damaged organs overnight. This music isn't a magic wand that you can simply wave over your affected area and make it brand new again. But 432 Hz encoded music can bring a state of calm and serenity, which has a lot of health benefits and through constant use, it can have a lot of positive, long-lasting effects on the body. 10 or 15 years ago, finding music like this meant you had to special order it from the internet or go to special stores. Nowadays, it can be found almost anywhere. That's because there are many that have realized the importance of this frequency and the health benefits associated with it. There are a lot of musicians and therapists that upload such music on the internet in order to give people the opportunity to listen to it and make up their own minds about the help they can get. 
you can find practically anything you need online, from simple music backgrounds to helpful meditation and guidance music, and even more mainstream music that has been specifically encoded at 432 Hz frequency in order to help listeners enjoy it and give them a chance to actually improve their state as they do so. 432 Hz music has been around for centuries, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. That's because there's been a lot of research linked to it, and it shows that it actually has a lot of health benefits. That means that there are lots of people rediscovering its powerful healing abilities every day, and making their way towards what can be a very strong revival of the phenomenon of using 432 Hz music in everyday life. Also, more and more music makers are adopting this frequency for their work. That's because they understand that this type of music is easier to listen to than other formats, and because they want to help the people that listen to their music be able to have a wonderful experience while doing that. Unfortunately, the mainstream music industry is still dominated by other encoding formats, mostly because retuning or buying new instruments may be quite difficult, and not to mention expensive. But there are still some very solid strongholds for the 432 format out there, from those that create music specifically for meditation, to those that take modern music and re-encode it, and even to those that choose to compose using this format. There are still enough people out there doing what they need to in order to keep the hope alive. We may not decipher all the mysteries of the 432 number and frequency. It's been a part of history for a very long time and will continue to mesmerize and fascinate many researchers all over the world. There will be many more articles written about it, studies and research is done, but the mystery is part of its charm. So maybe we should just accept that this is one of those numbers that simply exist in nature and is related to many things of importance, both in our day-to-day -day lives as well as on a higher plane, and try to use its powers as carefully as possible to the benefit of us and others.